Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command, World War II, World at War. It is May of 1943, we are playing as the Axis in this game. Uh, we have successfully taken Egypt as the Axis, but we're about to withdraw from it, because the Americans are about to roll into western Libya, steamroll our forces there, and these troops frankly could be better put to use on the continent, probably in, in Russia. So if we can get them there... That would be great. Uh, meanwhile, on the Russian front, we've advanced deep in the Caucasus, deep into the Caucasus. We're on the verge of taking the city of Grozny, uh, although the Russians are holding out there uh, admirably. And we're also dealing with a Soviet uh, resistance near Stalingrad, uh, Vornezhev, and also in our attempt to drive east against the new capital at Kubanezhev and the alternate capital at Perm, uh, the Soviets are still very strong. Meanwhile, the one area that gives me a lot of concern is our flank over here near Pizov uh, in the Baltic States region, where uh, the Soviets, frankly, are stronger than us. All we have is majority uh, ally troops, like these two Italian corps, this is it a Romanian corps, and then a couple of understrength uh, German infantry corps. We do have one heavy tank unit that's going to come north, hopefully to try and stabilize the situation. I would much rather turn that loose against the Soviets here in the east, but... We need to stabilize the situation here. Meanwhile, with the eventual loss of North Africa, the Americans will probably turn to invading Italy uh, or France in the near term. So things are a little bit dubious on the uh, German situation. There's opportunity, but there's also a lot to be concerned about. Uh, meanwhile, on the Chinese front in Asia, uh, the Japanese have successfully taken the capital at Chongqing and are on the verge of taking the new Chinese capital, Langkau, uh, while we also attempt to drive on the final Chinese capital at Umrichi. Uh, we'll see if we're able to do that or not. Fortunately, the interesting thing here is the Chinese don't have any more rail lines because we're too far into the hinterland, so these units that we have up here in the north may be able to sprint west faster than any other so, uh, Chinese troops can relocate and cut them off from their source of supply. The British are attacking in from India, but they're having supply constraints due to the terrain and lack of adequate uh, headquarters units. Our troops are beginning the invasion of Burma down here in the south, uh, with our headquarters unit coming up and hopefully providing adequate reinforcements there. Uh, and the Dutch East Indies have finally fallen, and we're in the process. We just crushed an American outfit at Soryang. We're in the process of trying to strengthen our position on the island chains here in the Pacific. And that's the situation of May 1943. One other thing to call out, the uh, Argentinian, uh, Argentines, Argentinian forces have just joined the war on the side of the Axis, and we are in the process of... Uh, apparently you can't force march these guys. Well, that's going to suck. Uh, we're in the process of uh, getting those troops to the uh, border of uh, Brazil, where the uh, enemy is located, because the Brazilians have joined the Allies and the Argentines have joined the Axis. So we'll see if we can actually make any progress here and maybe defeat Brazil and, and have the Americans have a bit of a sideshow that they have to deal with. Uh, and that's the situation right now. So we've already kind of spent our money. We've already moved our troops. Let's go ahead and end the turn and see what the Allies have in store for us. As we approach June of 1943. Allied Raiders, of course. Japan's developing a ground attack weapon level 2 for its air units. The German economy is up to 664 uh, MPPs this turn. The Japanese are now over 300. The concern for Japan is not China. They're going to deal with China adequately. The concern for Japan is dealing with the eventual American counterattack, which will surely manifest itself soon, given we're into mid-1943, the Americans are likely about to go on a rampage there. Meanwhile, there's several weak and exposed German units on the Russian front that we need to be a little bit concerned about, uh, because the Soviets, if they effectively counterattack, could pose a bit of a problem for us. Meanwhile, there's almost like a little Kursk salient going on here, and it looks like the Soviets at least have pulled two troops out by rail. So it'll be interesting to see if they pull troops back toward the uh, sort of Kazan region along the Volga as maybe a new defensive line. There's also a bit of a pocket building up to the north of Moscow that could lead to some of their troops being a little bit exposed uh, to encirclement uh, without adequate cities to uh, uh, protect them. Okay. 
Apparently the Russian Navy is bombarding some of our troops on the Baltic coast. The German Navy is all but gone. The Italian Navy as well. We have two subs in the Mediterranean. That's about it. We did a little bit of damage to an American heavy cruiser last turn, but we didn't destroy it. American bombers hitting Tripoli. Meanwhile, the Americans are really focusing their efforts against... Uh, oh, shit. British bombers out of Sudan are hitting Alexandria. American fighters out of North Africa are hitting submarines. Soviet bombers in the Baltic are hitting Italian troops there. Meanwhile, raids and interceptors galore here north of Moscow. And there goes one of the Italian units here. The Soviet Air Force is suddenly, out of nowhere... Uh, became a, a bit of a potent threat that we have to deal with. Soviet Navy also just got very active, bombarding these tank this tank unit here, which I'm sure will get destroyed if the Soviets advance against it at all. Mechanized troops doing nothing there. That was good for us. Oh, it would have been nice to counterattack him or to do some damage there. Meanwhile, a very strong Soviet counterattack on our flank here in the Baltic region, by the looks of it. Also counterattacking our troops here near Vladimir. I really need to pull my troops back for a turn or two and rest and replenish them. We just developed level 3 tanks, and we really need to equip our troops with level 3 tanks, but we haven't gotten around to it yet. And none of our armor here is adequately strengthed. Meanwhile, the Soviets are moving an army to the border of Helsinki which would knock the Finns out of the war, our northern allies. Lots of fighting here. The Soviets launched a major offensive in the spring of 43, which is kind of interesting. I was hoping the game would model the historical preference for the winter offensives until the Soviets had fully turned the tide on the Germans, but thus far, no dice. Meanwhile, that is plunging a dagger a bit into the flank of our position here in uh, Russia. We're going to have to deal with that. Meanwhile, American mechanized troops have moved forward here into uh, Libya. Three attacks there by mechanized, two by mechanized, one by infantry. Interestingly enough, the Italians hold their own ground pretty well there. The Allies must be having some supply issues. Okay, moving to China, you can see the um, the Indian soldiers in the British Army attacking some Chinese forces near Kwai Chau. The British out of Groningen continue to attack German garrison units here, uh, just on the German border here in the north of um, Belgium, or north of Holland. The Chinese, I, I'm not sure if they reinforced or if they replaced their unit here that was badly damaged here. If they did reinforce, though, I think it'll it'll hurt their experience totals, which will be nice. Sorry if my voice sounds a little bit funny, guys. I've got a uh, bit of a sore mouth. I've been uh, feeling a little bit under the weather lately. Uh, it's been kind of one reason I missed a video the other day, and I'd been posting some other videos that I had recorded a while ago. But... Um, you know, hopefully it's not bleeding too much into the actual commentary here. I really would love to cut those troops off and create a bit of a pocket there and destroy them. I just don't know how feasible that is. You just move that headquarter unit all the way out there. Huh. They're doing a lot of operational moves. Those are expensive, so that's good for us if they are. If I'm reading that right. American heavy cruisers at Algiers. Maybe we can torpedo them with our German and Italian submarines in the area. Meanwhile, the Dutch have some submarines near uh, Singapore. Our Japanese Navy's a bit spread out with some troops re resting and refitting in Indochina and Borneo and some other troops on the northern coast of New, or New Guinea. That's something we have to be careful about because if the American fleet does come knocking and our fleet's dispersed, they may have a very easy time of it. Soviet rocket troops here near Stalingrad. Some And uh, more tank losses here in southern Libya. French partisans are disrupting supply near Nancy. Partisan activity in China. Fuck. Danish workers strike against the German occupation. God damn it! Leslie Howard, plane is shot down over the Bay of Biscay. 
Okay. All right, let's start pulling some troops back. In Libya is what I'm referring to. So we lost one Italian corps. We lost the third Finnish garrison. All right. Um, <clears throat> so the turn is over, or at least the combat turn is over. And now we're into our own turn, our chance to respond to the Allied actions here in early June 1943. Uh, sorry, guys, if this one's a little disjointed. I uh, Honestly, I recorded the turn results. I saved the game quickly, and then I um, started recording a new session. Usually how I, I break things up, just not, not sort of in my mind, but... Um, I usually have save it about halfway through the stream, and in this case, I actually lost power. Never happened before, but I actually lost power uh, as I was concluding part two, which resulted in corrupting the save file, uh, which means that I have to replay this whole turn, but I kind of know a little bit of information that I found out um, already, uh, so I guess a little bit of an advantage there for us. In... Um, Argentina here, we're going to move the Argentine forces uh, into uh, Brazil. We're going to first try and take Porto, uh, Alagari, and then we're going to move to Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. If, uh, if circumstances permit, I'm not sure how strong uh, the Brazilian forces are or not. Uh, meanwhile, uh, in the Mediterranean, we're going to go ahead and try and do a little bit of damage here to the American heavy cruiser here in the port at Algiers uh, with our own submarine forces. And uh, we're going to then move these naval forces north and east toward mainland Italy. Um, in North Africa, we're going to go ahead and transport these tanks to uh, Italy. Move this headquarters here to Bari. We're going to move the Africa Corps armor over there. Uh, the uh, artillery doesn't need to go to Italy because it's in better strength at level 8. So it's just going to go straight to Thessalonica. And we'll move this garrison unit to make room for it. It'll rail to the Russian front uh, in the next turn or so. Meanwhile, uh, the Italian and German unit, infantry units here in Egypt will move to Alexandria. And uh, Rommel will move to Tobruk where he will depart from next turn. In North Africa, we'll reinforce the uh, Italian garrison unit that has stood up these three American units. These guys will die next turn for sure, but hopefully it'll mean Tripoli won't fall to the Allies uh, right away. Is Tripoli the capital? I don't actually see a capital here in Libya, interestingly enough. Um, so that's the Middle East. Uh, if we move to Gruningen, uh, if you will. Let's see, are these guys dug in at all? Level two. What happens if I attack here? I lose casualties, which is to be expected. Did I knock their entrenchment down at all? I did not. They're still level two. What if I attack with these guys? Ooh, nice. Level two hit there by the uh, Bulgarians. They did better than I thought they would. And they knocked one out of the entrenchment level, which is also good. Uh, the German troops also knocked one out of the entrenchment level. The garrison troops also did a reasonably good job there. And then the cavalry division uh, beat them up pretty good. So these guys may reinforce a little bit next turn, but they'll all be inexperienced troops, whereas these guys are a one star right now, uh, and their morale is one and supply is one, so these guys should be destroyed next turn. Uh, meanwhile, on the Russian front, we're going to move our heavy tanks forward. Uh, the question is where. So we'll move these fighters back here, and then I think... I don't like spending a ton of money operating my troops, but I am going to operate these heavy tanks to Potashk. These guys are going to reinforce. These guys are going to fall back one. Uh, I think same for these guys. They're going to fall back along the railway line, where I think we'll have a better chance of having a defensive as we move these heavy tanks forward here to counterattack against predominantly Soviet heavy infantry. Uh, meanwhile, in the north of the Soviet Union, uh, we're going to see about destroying some of these Soviet units out here. But I also want to pull and reinforce some of these armored units back. So I think 
maybe we move the problem is none of these headquarters can like move to where they need to move to but I think what we do is we'll use our bombers against these troops here what was their entrenchment level it was three now it's down to th or it was four now it's down to three no damage done really still no damage done At least our infantry is doing some damage. Alright, so our armor there in Moscow finished them off. It's okay, I'm falling, pulling that armor back and moving these infantry forward. And we just took the northern section of the city of Moscow, Moscow number two. Meanwhile, the... Um, Let's move Von Lieb here. Let's move this guy toward Moscow. So uh, Von Manstein will occupy Moscow next turn. This guy will move up to Rezhev in the north. And that'll do be that. Meanwhile, we still have one Stuka left, which hasn't bombed in the north. So we'll send him against these infantry here. Wow. Did four damage there, eh? Four damage there, eh? What am I, Canadian? Alright, there we go. Destroyed that Russian army. Meanwhile, we're gonna pull these tanks back. These Italians need to reinforce. These Germans... I think we'll move some of these air units forward. Alright. So this headquarters is going to occupy Moscow. I prefer these guys. Get over to this town here and occupy it, but it's going to be a tough slog to do that. Alright, so meanwhile, these guys are going to reinforce because they didn't move at all. These guys fought. Both these units moved. So I think next turn's probably going to be a reinforcing turn for our armor. We'll see about reinforcing some of these units already at the front. Okay... This guy's back. Reinforce these. I'd rather reinforce these, or upgrade these guys. Meanwhile, in the south, near Grozny, we're going to go ahead and strategically bomb the Russians there and do some damage, thankfully. Our Stukas will then follow that up with six damage. Our infantry will do a little bit of damage themselves, and our mechanized troops will finish them off. Huzzah! So Grozny will fall, and now we can see about cutting these Russians off. Move the headquarters up to give them supply. Hopefully they don't get counterattacked. The mechanized troops don't get counterattacked and destroyed. Same for this armor over here. But I'm hoping that we can just isolate these guys and defeat them next turn. Meanwhile, let's pull this armor back out of harm's way. Pull these paratroopers back a little bit too, and then these guys will go ahead and uh, refit next turn. These get This uh, headquarters unit should move to Grozny in the next turn uh, once we reduce this army, and then maybe we can move on Baku as well. I guess we'll reinforce this guy because I don't really feel like attacking with him. Okay, so I think that about does it on the German front. Mm, I can't reinforce any of these guys, so I'd rather pocket the cash. Yep, 
Meanwhile, I'm trying to threaten the rear and advance on Leningrad here with what little I have to try and preserve uh, the Finnish nation as long as possible. I don't think it's going to survive an attack from these guys, but we'll see. Um, Italy doesn't have enough money for a new armored unit, so we're going to save that. Same for Germany. We'll save that money. Meanwhile, this submarine's going to retreat toward Europe. We're done messing around on the Russian supply convoys. Actually, if we take a look here, if we go to the reports and we look at the Soviet Union, 82 strength is actually slightly weaker than I thought they would have been. I thought they were 83. Um, but their income and, and casualties this turn basically matched each other. Mainly because we were a little bit more passive, I think, on the Russian front this theater because this turn because they are counterattacking from Novograd uh, south toward Vitebsk and also into the into the Balk Baltics, which are kind of the exposed flank. I mean, they could theoretically, if they had a large Panzer force here in Novograd, they could advance on Minsk, and then up north here they could advance on Minsk, and they could pocket basically half the German army. Um, but we'll see. The Caucasus is going reasonably well, at least. We'll see how this army is, is able to function next turn. But I would love to get in and take Baku in these oil fields here and really kind of close off this part. And, you know, if we could put two units here on the, the roads into Iran and we could put the rest north, you know, let's say we put this army and this army here, then we could move two armored units, one mechanized and an airborne unit, and two air units north to try and turn the Soviet flank at Stalingrad and drive into the rear of Kubanezhev. Maybe. I, I don't know. We'd have to see. Uh, North Africa done. Germany done over here. This is all done. So I think the German war effort is done. I think we need to move to the Asian theater to deal with the Japanese. Alright, so we're going to attack with armor first. Hold these guys back. Attack with this garrison. Pull them back. Attack with this garrison. Do nothing. Uh, these guys. Oh, shoot. Shoot! No, I can't finish him off. That was a mistake. Oops. Well, we almost took Molman. Next turn we should. Uh, meanwhile, these guys need to reinforce here. I'd rather upgrade these. Well, let's actually reinforce these guys. Uh, we've got some partisans to deal with. And they're gone. And they're dead. Alright. Move these guys south. To Chengdu. All right, so Chinese theater. I think, honestly, we're just going to go for Langkau. We're going to go for the capital right away. So first things first. And then because my logic here is that the only thing the Chinese have right now that are holding this massive army together from a supply perspective, unless the AI is cheating, is the city of Langkau, the capital. If they lose this capital, they lose their only source of supply for five or six hexes. And my assumption is that with the loss of that supply... The Chinese uh, will quickly turn into cannon fodder or fold, one or the other. So my entire air focus here is going to be the destruction of the Sion army. And apparently not do a very good job. Well, the weird thing is these naval flotilla bombers, despite being less deadly against than the army tactical bombers, or the level 2 naval flotilla bombers, are better so this seems like a bit of a waste. Alright. Well, that guy got destroyed. Too bad we don't have any troops that can move into the capital next turn. Ah, <sighs> damn it. Damn it. What am I supposed to do? I can't move anyone into the capital. 
That's a... I don't even know if it's an accent. That's a terrible whatever it is. There you go. Alright, so we took this town also in the north. So that should help us break out here a bit. These guys move to Yanan. Alright, so we took the, uh, what is this town? The town of Ningxia. And we also destroyed the Chinese unit in Langkau. Additionally, we destroyed all the economic value that Langkau has to it. So that's good for us. They'll definitely put a new unit in Langkau next turn. But, um... It won't be entrenched at all, which means it should be much easier to defeat and destroy. Meanwhile, in the south, we've kind of driven back a uh, unit of special forces there that basically have no supply. The British situation in China is complicated by poor supply. So that situation is done, I think. Oh my god, look at all the possible partisans. Alright, so meanwhile, one other thing. One other thing I learned is that there are allied naval units in this area. I wasn't really looking for my destroyer to run into them, but hey. Alright, so we'll move some surface vessels down here. Some of these rebuilt battleships, losing a fair bit of casualties, actually. But also, doing a fair bit of damage. Alright, set mode, naval. One to three. There you go. That enemy cruiser is finished off by that carrier. Meanwhile, we're bringing our light carrier and our heavy cruiser south as well. So the Japanese Navy is con is concentrating around a, a British naval force. So there's two British heavy cruisers and one British battleship in this area. Reinforce them up to ten. Move him back home to re finish reinforcing. They're too far away to get into the action anyway. Um, they're already set to naval. First strike will finish off this heavy... Oh, not quite. So we almost finished off the heavy cruiser in one strike. Instead it took a second. So we destroyed two British heavy cruisers, and now we have a British battleship to deal with. We have three carriers to deal with the British battleship. Set mode, naval. Okay. One would hope we can finish her off now. She's already set to naval. There you go. One British battleship, two British heavy cruisers on the northern coast of Australia, destroyed by the Japanese Navy. What did I do that for? Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Go ahead and transport these guys to Dill. Offload them there. So, that's good. That was a good result. We did lose a fair number of air units there. We did lose some casualties, if you will. But all in all, two heavy cruisers and a battleship destroyed is a positive result. The German Navy here will reinforce. 
So if we actually take a look at the reports and so we can take a look at the British, I'm assuming they lose a fair bit of naval strength. They have 22 naval strength left. The Americans have 37, so you can see the Americans are much more powerful. But you can see here, this is one of the worst days for the British since the war began. Since 1940, it was the worst. Uh, or maybe this other turnover here too, but very bad day for the British Navy. Their national morale presumably would take a hit too. I don't know if the Soviets are still fighting. The Americans' morale is still good. The Chinese is below 50% almost. They're basically like, we suck, but we're going to keep fighting. We have no chance, but we're going to keep fighting, boys. Keep fighting. Stiff up a lip, boys. We're all right. We've got this. Um... I hate to do the long-range amphibious transport, but I plan to take Kukum. We'll move our fleet over that way in the next few turns. We'll get some subs out scouting out the Solomons. And then we'll try and take Kukum, which is the capital of Guadalcanal and the Solomon Islands. So I think that does it for our turn. Hopefully I don't lose power here. I'm going to go ahead and save. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to do it for our turn here. We did start advancing in uh, Argentina. Hopefully we can take Porto Alguerri or at least approach the city next turn. We've got our headquarters and our garrison unit on the roll, uh, road as well. There's a nice rail line that takes us up to Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, uh, which are the uh, secondary supply and the capital of Brazil. I'm assuming they won't be undefended, but I have been able to upgrade my uh, Argentine core to level 211 uh, thanks to German technology. Uh, meanwhile, is there anything we can fund or that we should fund with the Germans here? Uh, we got up to level 3 tanks. Infantry weapons are already maxed out. Frankly, the Italians really need infantry weapons. But um, Maybe logistics? Well, we're already researching max there. Japan is also researching that. Yeah, I think we'll just keep the money and next turn we'll buy some armored units. With whatever we have left over. So yeah, I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Sorry for the sort of the... the oh, one other thing I wanted to do. Transport this guy. To Lipa. And then we're going to go ahead and upgrade him, but we'll move, uh, we'll move some units around. in uh, Norway here in order to get another core unit into Russia to sort of help counter the Russian menace. Okay, so with that being said, I think we are done for the turn. All right, with that being said, these guys will probably rail to Russia next turn. These guys will probably pause one to reinforce, then rail to Russia. These guys will need two turns to reinforce and upgrade. Uh, we're going to be toward August before we really begin any sort of real push toward Kubanezhev. We may have to try and risk a winter offensive. We'll see. Um, but I think that's about it for this turn. We did want to move this mechanized unit here so it can reinforce next turn. Did want to attack there. Okay, so I think that'll do it. We'll go ahead and save after that successful and, f and favorable attack for us. Oh, God, I don't even know which one I just saved. All right, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys, for yet another episode of the uh, Strategic Command World War II World at War. I'm going to go ahead and catch some sleep. It's after 4 o'clock my time, thanks to that two-hour power outage. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, as always. A little bit more of a subdued video, if you will. But uh, until next time, uh, should we attack this? Yeah, let's do it. All right, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.